Hello and welcome to G Man's Gaming. We're back doing another adventure game, and I've actually managed to get this running on Windows 10. Um, cool guide out there. I'll put a link in the description too if you want to play this game on PC. Really handy to have. But I'm actually amazed this is actually running. I was meaning to record this a couple of years ago, but I never got it running. I've had some bad days since I started work as a private investigator. But I'd never woken up dead before. It all started the week before, on a cold and wet September day in Ankh-Morpork, the oldest and most depraved of all the cities on the Discworld. But hey, you've got to love it. I'd been working as a PI for a little over a month, and business was slow. Hiring an investigator to look into your business requires trust. The amount of trust in Ankh Morpork wouldn't fill a cup. And it's a small cup I'm talking about. Sure, people trust that you don't get on the wrong side of the patrician. People trust that you don't walk into the shades alone. People trust that the Assassin's Guild will fulfill their contracts or double your money back. Yeah, people even trust death. Just don't ask them to trust their mothers. Mr. Luton? If I'm not, I should fire the guy who painted the door. <laughs> so this is what a private investigator looks like. I expected someone more heroic. Heroism costs extra. What can I do for you, Miss... Mrs. Actually. And the name is Carlotta. Okay, Mrs. Actually. Carlotta it is. What's a girl like you doing out on a night like this? I want to hire you, Mr. Luton. Please, call me Luton. Mr. sounds so formal. How much do you charge for a simple investigation? I don't know. I've never had a simple investigation. A tricky one is 20 a day. I'll give you 200 in advance, plus expenses. For 200, I guess I should treat you with some respect. Oh, I wouldn't ask a guy like you to attempt the impossible. What's the case? I want you to find a man named Mundi. 
Why do you want to find Mundy? Do you know him? No. And this case will go a lot faster if you let me ask the questions. You like to be in control, don't you, Luton? If you don't pull the strings, then you're the puppet. Tell me about you and Mundy. I've been a lonely woman, Luton. You amaze me. <laughs> be surprised. Shocked, maybe, but not surprised. Mundi is my lover, Luton. Or used to be. He's been away for a while, over in Sort. He came back to Ank Moorpork a couple of days ago on the Milka. But he didn't come to see me. I think he may be having an affair. You're wondering whether my husband knows about it. Actually, I was wondering when you were going to give me the money. <laughs> my husband passed away several years ago. I hope the poor guy was smiling at the time. Is there anything you can tell me about Mundy that might help me find him? He's got blue eyes, brown hair, and a black heart. You'd like him. Has he got any friends in Ankh-Morpork? Does anyone? How tall is he? I don't know. I don't picture him standing up. What was Mundy's business in sort? I don't know. I never asked about his work, and he never told me. Must be a very straightforward relationship. As simple as they come. Where can I find the ship he came in on? Down at the wharf. Have you been there yourself? I avoid places like that. Women and sea... Uh, forget I asked. This is a bad neighborhood for you to come into alone, Carlotta. I can take care of myself. I believe you. Good. Trust is important. I said I believed you. I never said I trusted you. Don't you like me, Luton? I like a lot of things. I like dogs. But I wouldn't trust one not to bite me. I won't bite. Shame. I haven't been bitten in a long while. I'd better get started on your case. Where can I contact you? I'll be in touch. Be seeing you, Luton. I hoped I would see her again, because she still hadn't paid me. <laughs> still, it wasn't every day that a beautiful woman offered me a case. Frankly, it wasn't often that anybody offered me a case. And 200 would certainly help pay the rent, if I had anything left over from my bar bill. <laughs> Right. Sapient pear wood comes from a plant so magical that it is totally impervious to all forms of magic and so valuable that thieves have cut each other's throats to own it. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford a desk made out of it, so I made do with pine. It's a nice desk, though. I could hardly carry the desk around, even if I wanted to. <laughs> I had purchased a large indexed scroll rack to keep track of all the cases I was going to handle. The Mundy case made it two. All I had to do was track down Mundy and tell Carlotta where he was. I'd purchased the imp-powered coffee bean machine from Cut Me Own Throat Dibbler. The man whose name was the byword for quality. With CMOT Dibbler, you could say buy to quality. <laughs> I'll say this for the ICBM. It made coffee strong enough to blow your head off. On the downside, the imp tended to use most of the beans to fuel its own addiction. Some days, the poor thing was so jittery, the coffee machine would vibrate off the shelf. Nothing like a cup of imp-made coffee to make me jittery and paranoid. A lot of strange things had happened to me since becoming a private investigator. But the weirdest was the irrepressible sensation that the most important thing for me to own as a PI was a door with my name painted on the glass. Some mysteries are best left unsolved, I guess. I think we could safely say that the door to my office was just for getting in and out of my office. <laughs> oh. Right, so let's leave it off. Oh, wharf first. The wharf was on the upmarket side of the river in the city of Ankh. The Moorpork docks on the other side of the river were not a place wise travelers disembarked at. But then again, wise travelers tried to avoid Ankh Moorpork altogether. But if you traveled a lot, it was hard to miss. Like malaria. <laughs> The Milka was a tramp schooner, one of the many ramshackle ships that plied their trade around the Circle Sea. 
From the looks of it, it should have sunk years ago. Even the rats thought twice before boarding it. Are you the first mate? Ah! Shiver me timbers! Hoist the main brace! Let's start again. Are you the first mate? Hoy! That I be! You're not going to get any money off me, so you can drop the fake accent. Oh, sorry, you know how it is. Some people are stupid enough to fall for that sort of thing. What can I do for you? When do you sail? As soon as we've got her loaded. How much is passage? Where are you looking to go? I don't know. Sort, perhaps. We've just come from there. It'll be a long time before we get back there again. Did you bring any passengers? Sure. We always try to take a couple of passengers. They pay their way, and if there's a big storm, they are very useful as to sacrifice to the angry sea gods. Of course, we tell people they were washed over the side. What were the passengers on the last voyage like? There were three of them. One of them seemed all right, but the other two... I don't know about them. There was something strange about them. Do you sacrifice passengers often? No. The captain doesn't like it. He says it's bad for business. I said that we were advertising ourselves as offering an exciting tour of the Circle Sea. But he pointed out that most people would expect the tour to be above the water. <laughs> if I'd had my way, we'd have thrown some people off the last voyage. Bad omens? The old crew had a bad feeling of dread from the moment we set off. Looking at the state of the ship, that doesn't come as a surprise. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? Doesn't ring any bells, I'm afraid. What was strange about these passengers? I don't know. One of them seemed kind of foreign. I mean, more foreign than most. Um. Was there a man named Mundy on the last voyage? It's funny you should ask that. You're the second person today to have an interest in Monday. Who was the first? A dwarf. He didn't give his name. I don't think he was from round here, though. What about Monday? What was he like? I don't pry into the passenger's business. But for a man who came on board pretty happy, he seemed pretty unsettled when he left. Not that I blame him. Something was definitely amiss on this last voyage. Do you know where he is now? Monday? No. Like I said, I don't pry into passenger's business. Unless you actually look through their luggage after they've been washed over the side. Hey, what are you inferring? I'm not inferring anything. I'm implying that you might have had a look at their luggage at one point. If I had, I certainly wouldn't admit it to you. Which either means you didn't look, or you didn't find anything of interest. You better watch your steps, son. It's not good to make accusations like that. Don't worry. Anything we discuss is strictly between you, me, and anyone else I tell. <laughs> this is the Milka, isn't it? That's what it says on the prow. It's impossible to read anything written on that hull. Just because you can't read it doesn't mean it isn't there. Reality is subjective, after all. Don't get all existential with me. It was more ontological than existential. That's a really bad habit you've got there. What? Oh, sorry. I picked up a bad case of philosophy in Ephebe a couple of years ago, and I haven't been able to get rid of it since. Just can't seem to shake it off. Normal as anything, one minute. Next moment, I'm wondering if anything can truly be said to exist. A bit of a drawback when you're supposed to be navigating. Okay. Assuming the existence of an objective shared universe, is this the Milka? Yes. Can I have a look on board? No. That better not be some kind of philosophical objection. No one gets on board without Captain Jenkins' permission. Where is the captain? Oh, I don't know. But you could try the Cafe Ank. He usually goes there when he's in Ank Morpork. If it exists, of course. <laughs> Well, I missed all that. Bloody wasp flew into the room. <laughs> 